Hello, welcome to another video by LSX Engines, Tuning, and Marine. In this video, I'm uh, building a three liter, four cylinder Merc Cruiser engine. And um, I've been building engines, uh, looks like approximately 45 years. And um, this is the first time I've ever come across this problem. So this crankshaft, or actually this block and this crankshaft are a uh, replacement crank and block for uh, the customer's engine that, that blew up. It basically slung a rod and, and uh, knocked a hole inside the block. So the, uh, the crankshaft and, uh, and the block on that engine were toast and I, threw them, I basically threw them away to a recycling yard. So this, this engine and this crankshaft are from a core engine I bought to replace his block and crankshaft. So when I took this engine apart, this core apart, the crankshaft looked in pretty good shape. The mains looked good. The rod, uh, these rod journals looked really good. At the time that I uh, took it apart, there was no, there was very little um, uh, circumferential scoring on the journals. They were pretty, I couldn't detect any of them with my finger, with my fingernail. But I went ahead and took it to a machine shop and I had them polish these journals anyway. They polished the mains and they polished the rod journals. So, you know, and I got it back and, um, I assumed that they mic'd the crank for me, so I didn't think anything about it. Well, now that I'm building this engine, uh, the other night I was uh, checking my rod bearings and uh, main bearing. Well, I'd already checked the main bearings and they were good, so I went ahead and put this crank in this engine or in this block. And then as I was uh, preparing to uh, check my rod bearings, um, I measured all these journals. So, well, I measured the journals before I put this crank in the engine. So I had that written down. And then as I was starting to put my... Uh, my rod bearings and my pistons, like this is this is the pistons right here, pistons and rods, and uh, I've got a I've got a bearing and a rod right here that I'm checking. But um, as I put the uh, bearings in the, uh, the and by the way they were stock bearings, the part number is CB. Um, let's see the stock bearing part number is CB six six three P. Ignore that too for now. So the stock bearing, um, I put it in the rod, checked the clearance. And I came across a problem. My clearance has turned out to be uh, three and a half thousandths to four thousandths clearance on all these rod journals. And that's a problem because the factory service manual says the uh, maximum clearance should be two and a half thousandths. So, I'm, so I was faced with the dilemma of having to take this crank back out of this block and send it back to a machine shop, wait another two weeks for them to, to uh, turn these rod journals down 10,000 inch and buy any bearings. But as it turns out, when I, I got when I mic'd these journals, all the journals came in within uh, or very close within a few ten thousand inch of the minimum recommended factory size, which was uh, two point zero nine eight, two point zero nine, two point nine seven nine inches. Excuse me, two point zero nine seven nine inches. Um, and so the numbers that I wrote down are. This one, this one here was 2.0985 inches. That was the largest. The next one was 2.0980. Uh, the next was, that's number two. Number three was 2.0982 inches. And number four was 2.0983 inches. That was where I uh, checked with a micrometer on these, these rod journals. So um, when I measured the bearings, um, when I measured the bearings inside, the, and by the way, these, these bearing shells are put in the rod and the rod caps torque down and so you get an accurate measurement. And I use this dial bore indicator and I measured these clearances and they, I wrote the clearances on the rod, 2.102 and some other numbers. But this, this happens to be the largest one. So again, when I checked, the, when I use this largest rod on the largest journal over there, I still was, a, it was three and a half thousandths, either three and a half or four thousandths um, a clearance, which is too much. Uh, it's supposed to be two and a half max. So I was in a pickle. Um, I did not want to take the crank out, and send it back. Uh, it was going to waste more time. So, um, but then I remembered on uh, when I was looking at Rock Auto in the past, I'd seen some funky sized bearings. So I went back and looked at the Rock Auto website, and sure enough, they sell in the stock size only, not in oversizes, but in stock size only. They sell a bearing that is this is uh, 663P-2. So the dash two means this bearing is two thousandths of an inch uh, thicker, which is, I guess you call it undersized. It takes, it's another two thousand of an inch, uh, takes up two thousand inch clearance on the rod. Uh, the, so the rod bearing clearance. So instead of this being 2.102, 
with that bearing, with that bearing I just showed you in this rod, it now becomes 2.100 because it takes two and a half, it takes two thousandths off this number. That's two thousandths, so it comes out 2.1. So now my clearances are back in the ballpark. part. Um, on the rod, on the draw general, it shows just like point, it's what, either one and a half or 1.6 thousandths of an inch. Actually, it's one and a half thousandths, excuse me. So now the rod clearances are back in, uh, back in the game. So I wanted to point out that um, if you have this situation, like I said, this is the first time I've, I've been building engines for 45 years, and this is the first time I've come across this situation, but I guess it's a, a matter of tolerance stacking where all my rod journals are at the bare, the bare minimum of the recommended clearance, I mean, excuse me, the recommended journal size, which is 2.0979. All of my rod journals are close to that. And all my bearing caps or all my bearings are at the far extreme end of it, or the other end of it, which is 2.102, 2.1015, and 2.1012. So all my rods are at the max limit of what they should be, and all my, my journals are at the minimum of what they should be, and the tolerance stacking just happened to make my clearances too high. Now you might say some of these rods, uh, some of these caps had stretched or something. They might have stretched a thousand an inch, but they all, they apparently all did. So I'm, I'm, um, I'm not considering that a defect. But uh, the bottom line is that um, this bearing, this undersized bearing of a two thousandths of an inch undersized bearing, has saved me uh, two weeks on this on this engine. It, it saved it saved the day because now I don't have to take this crank back out, and have a machine. Uh, you know, have to deliver it back to, to the machine shop, buy new bearings, all that kind of stuff. Or I, well, I had to buy new bearings, but I'm just saying I don't have to buy 10,000 undersized bearings. So these uh, these undersized bearings uh, really saved my tail on this one. Um, by the way, you can get them in the, you can also get this in a 1,000 undersized or 2,000 undersized. I bought the two, but you can also get one. So if I bought one, I would probably not have made it. Like some of these were four thousandths too big. Uh, you take one thousand, I'm still at three thousandths, which is not within the two and a half thousandths of the factory service manual. So I bought the two thousandths, which has put me very, actually a very tight bearing now. I'm right at the limit of the, the low clearance, uh, which I think was point zero. It's either one and a half or one point seven thousandths of an inch clearance, but. Um, I checked, also I checked the five, the, by the way, these, uh, just for information, this rod bearing part number, this, the tips I'm giving you in this video for this 3.0 Merc Cruiser will also apply to um, a small block Chevrolet. They use the same CB-663P bearing on a small block Chevrolet, uh, the V8 5.0 and 5.7. And uh, also LS motors. The LS motors just happen to be one of the few common uh, parts that are shared between LS motors and small block Chevrolets or the uh, CB663P rod bearings. So this, this tip also applies to LS motors and small block Chevrolet motors. Uh, so that's a little extra information there. But um, like I was saying, these, uh, these bearings have uh, really saved me on this one. It took about two days for these bearings to get here. I found this out, uh, actually I found this out last weekend. It is, now, it is now Thursday evening. I found this out last week on a Sunday. They arrived Wednesday and I've been uh, checking them out and putting them in uh, or about to put them in this engine. So just want to point this out or uh, provide a tip about uh, how you can uh, uh, kind of save the day with a crank that's uh, on the marginal end of being too, too small. And these bearings are going to uh, keep me from having to stop work on this engine and, and allow me to keep working the engine. So thanks for watching. And if you uh, found this, this video beneficial, please subscribe to my channel and uh, stay tuned for the next video. There will be one coming out shortly.